All right, let's see. So I'm going to talk about Thanksgiving. All right, I was going to talk. I talked about it a little bit. I, I just celebrated Thanksgiving. Now I haven't I haven't celebrated Thanksgiving in a long time. There's a few reasons, and I'm going to give them to you now. First and foremost, the word Thanksgiving. I am very grateful for my life. I'm very grateful for the things that I have been given, for the opportunities that have come my way. And I I love giving thanks every single day. I love recognizing the the good things in my life. I make a point to do so. You know, I I I want more people to do that. And it's it frustrated me for a long time that I saw a lot of people take for granted what they had, not care about the world that they lived in. I mean, and it's true more now than ever. And and then need one day to give thanks. Today we're going to give thanks, and that's it. That's the only time I need to worry about giving thanks. It's Thanksgiving. It's when we give thanks. It's like why is it one day? We have so much to be grateful for. So many things people don't realize how incredible life is and how lucky we are to be living in a time where things are taking care of us as they are nowadays. All right? Now th that's reason 1. Reason 2 is because I was under the impression that it had everything to do with when the pilgrims came and the Indians gave them corn and gave thanks and had a feast together before they raped and pillaged the land. And I was just like, F that. Like, I don't, I don't want anything to do with that holiday because I think it's terrible. People are giving thanks for false, under false pretenses. Half of them don't even care. They, they are going to forget the very next day and go back to living normal life and not really giving thanks. It's just to say they give thanks. Yeah, sure, whatever. I'm running through the numbers. Or based on a holiday, turns out that's all wrong also. It has nothing to do with, with the pilgrims. I was doing uh, this random thing popped up on my feed. It was a little video about the truth, the true story of Thanksgiving. And I was like, oh, this should be interesting. What's this about? And it turns out it is Sarah Josepha Hale became the mother of Thanksgiving. Now, this is a long, long winded story, but I'm going to read it all. All right. Because I thought it was really fantastic. All right. And it goes a little bit about George Washington, about giving thanks, but it never really stuck. It was never really. Um, and and I, actually, it's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm just going to read it. Look, since religion was such an important part of early colonial life, Community-wide days of Thanksgiving weren't uncommon. Okay, right off the bat, it wasn't one day. Thanks, you know, days, community-wide, multiple days of giving thanks. All right, during the American Revolution, the Continental Congress started co-opting the tradition to celebrate certain key battle victories in nation uh, nationwide scale. In September 1789, Congress asked President George Washington to de designate a day of Thanksgiving for another political reason to mark the formation of the U.S. Constitution. I had no idea. All right, that. That was a, another fact alone that wasn't in that little video. You know, I only learned that when I started digging. That's amazing. G giving thanks for the Constitution? That's what Thanksgiving's about? I could get behind that. I'll tell you that. Uh, let, me, let me keep reading. On October 3rd, Washington decreed that November 26th of that year would be a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging that uh, with grateful hearts, the many signal favors of almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Man, how is that not on the forefront of why Thanksgiving is a thing? That is incredible. It's patriotic. It's they're giving thanks to form this union, this amazing country that we live in. Incredible. That is incredible. Man, I, I mean, it's just like, Everything I learned about Thanksgiving is wrong. That is that is not why Thanksgiving was a thing. It's given thanks that we were able to put this country together for the Constitution. Amazing. All right. It gets better, too. All right. It didn't officially create an annual holiday, but many states did continue celebrating Thanksgiving sometime in late fall, 
early winter in the years that followed. Throughout the 19th century, one woman in particular stood out as Thanksgiving biggest fan, Sarah Josepha Buell Hale. Here she is here. This is uh, Sa Sarah Hale. And uh, yeah, I'll just read about her. Hale was born in New Hampshire in 1788 and homeschooled by parents who taught women who thought women deserved an education. She showed a clear aptitude for writing, and when her husband died in 1822, she used those skills to provide her five young for her five young children. After publishing a collection of poems and an anti-slavery novel called Northwood in the mid 1820s, Hale took a job as the editor of a woman's magazine later known as Gaudy's Ladies Book. Though she wasn't exactly, exactly a feminist by today's standard, she underscored women's domestic duties and opposed women's suffrage. Um, and she did champion women's rights to educate and supported other up-and-coming female writers like Harriet Beecher Stowe and Lydia uh, Mary a Child. She also credited... Uh, she was also credited with authoring, or at least editing, uh, the nursery rhyme, Mary's Lamb, which is, we now know as Mary Had a Little Lamb. Very cool. So we don't know if she wrote it, but she at least edited it. Hmm. Very cool. Hale's most avid readers no doubt noticed another cause that she often mentioned in her work, the importance of making Thanksgiving a national holiday. As a New Englander, Hale grew up celebrating Thanksgiving, and she paid homage to it with a scene in her novel Northwood. In addition to roast turkey, stuffing, and pumpkin pie, the feast also featured beef, mutton, goose, duck, and huge plum pudding, custards, and pie of every name and description ever known in Yankee land. The holiday cropped up in other poems, short stories, and editorials that Hale published over the years, too. Uh, God has saved, enlarged, blessed, and prospered us beyond um, any people on this globe. We should, should we not be thankful and keep high holiday of gratitude and gladness in acknowledgement of these blessings? She wrote, Old English, she, fantastic. She wrote that in 1859, which is around the Civil War. Uh, actually, I think during the Civil War. Um, I was just ending around that point. Uh, for Hale, the holiday wasn't simply about giving thanks to God. It was also about fostering national unity. The country had grown from 13 colonies to around 30 states by the mid-1800s, and Hale saw Thanksgiving as a way to collapse the physical distance between families. Though the members of the same family might be too far separated to meet around one festive board, they would have the gratitude of knowing they were all enjoying the feast. From the St. John's to the Rio Grande, from the Atlantic to the, to the Pacific border, the telegraph of human happiness would move every heart and gladness simultaneously, Hale wrote in 1851 editorial. That's a beautiful thought, actually. You know, and I actually never really, it never really dawned on me that because it was one day, you know, Thursday of last week, everybody was giving thanks everybody was meeting together at the same time so even if you weren't able to be with all of your family members you would there would be some i don't know pleasantness in in knowing that they're out with their family all thinking of family everywhere thinking of being thankful and um it coming together in a time of turbulence in a in a world that is crazy i, I would say this thanksgiving it was more important than ever to be with your family, to think about your family, to talk to your family, to connect with people and give thanks for what you've got. Because as I said, we should give thanks every day, right? And I, and I do. I'm so grateful for my life, for the things, the opportunities, what's led me here. I love who I am. I love who I've become. I love the people in my life. And uh, I give thanks to them all the time, you know, but there's something about that that she said. It's about knowing we're all together no matter where we are. And that's awesome. I, I want to keep, I'm going to keep reading though. This is a, a letter she wrote to Lincoln. Now, I cannot read that, but maybe they sum it up here. Eventually Hale realized that getting all the governors to agree to celebrate Thanksgiving on the same day, which she thought should be the last Thursday in November might take a presidential proclamation. On September 28th, 1863, she wrote to president Abraham Lincoln asking him to issue one. Quote, you may have observed that there has been an increasing interest felt in our land to have Thanksgiving held on the same day in all the states. It now needs national recognition and author, uh, author, authoritative fixation only 
to become permanently an American custom and institution, she wrote. Scarcely a week later, Lincoln did issue a proclamation inviting the entire nation to observe Thanksgiving on the last Thursday in November. We didn't we don't know if Hale's letter caused him to make, take immediate action. For one, Lincoln made his declaration October 3rd, the anniversary of Washington's original Thanksgiving proclamation in 1789. Also, the Civil War had ravaged countless families throughout 18, 1863, and it's possible that Lincoln had already thought a year-end National Day of Thanks would inspire hope and resilience. The proclamation itself echoes this sentiment, asking people to implore the interposition of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. But even if Hale's one letter didn't directly bring about a proclamation, her lifelong crusade to promote Thanksgiving in every home definitely helped popularize the holiday. And though she died in 1879, more than 60 years before President Franklin D. Roosevelt passed a resolution to make the holiday official, her legacy as the mother of Thanksgiving lives on today. And it's almost a shame because I have never heard her name my entire life. I'm in my, my mid-30s. I've never heard her name. Her legacy isn't living on. They've changed Thanksgiving into some pilgrimage that you know the pilgrims came and native americans and you know sharing the well like we all know how that story actually was okay thanksgiving from from what i've found is celebrating the constitution being grateful that we were able to form this union that we've got okay being separated both states through war and disagreements and family through through various moves and uh, you know having land separate you to celebrate union coming back together after being apart and that is beautiful I i'll be celebrating thanksgiving from now on gladly proudly i i love the constitution i think we should celebrate it i think we should it should be um taught more we we need to learn more about it you know, learn about the Federalist Papers, how important they were. Learn about the Bill of Rights, how incredible they are, how they actually changed the Constitution and amend it through amendments, and how government works, how Congress actually works. Sure, we, we learned the overview, but then we're just told to vote for the president and don't worry about the rest. Even though I argue that the Senate's actually really important to know who's in there making the laws, who's actually making the laws the president is just one branch all branches are important we need to understand that all right so moving forward but anyway that is my show i am man i went long there i don't I, I i guess i ranted a lot today all right i'm gonna get into some super chats before i do i want to just thank you all for hanging out with me today uh if you'd like to donate you can donate to me directly on my website adamkrigler.net and uh, you can go to my PayPal account, but you can also send me physical mail, P.O. Box 68, Brunswick, Maryland, 21716. Very cool. I've gotten some really awesome things, and I, I really appreciate all of you guys that have sent me things. I'm going to roll the die as I start reading some Super Chats. I've rolled the die. The number's out there. I'm watching the chat if you guys want to start guessing. Uh, you're not going to win anything. Uh, and Byron, of course, uh, it corrected my, my Candace spelling, which I corrected. Thank you for that. Uh, Bob says, please look at IBOR fallbacks January 25th uh, to 2021. I don't know what that is, but I will look into that. Uh, thank you. I'll check that out. Let's see what we got. The numbers are starting to roll in. Man, where's all the numbers? Uh, it's 1 through 20, mind you, if you missed you know, that whole thing. All right, here comes...